Hey friend, you are listening to the Pro Organizers Coach Podcast. I'm your host, Samantha Brown. I'm a professional home organizer, decluttering specialist, and business coach. I created POC to empower you to reach new heights in your business. Through insightful interviews, expert guidance, and actionable strategies, we will equip you with the tools that you need to excel. This podcast is not just about tidying up spaces. It's about building a supportive sisterhood of passionate professional organizers. Whether you're a seasoned pro or you're just starting out, this podcast is for you. So let's do this. All right. Welcome back to the Pro Organizers Coach Podcast. On today's episode, I have Gina and she has been gracious enough to let me do a one-on-one coaching session with her for the podcast so you all can listen and you all can gain insight and wisdom and anything that she's going through. There's going to be a lot of things that I'm sure you're going through also. And so we just thought that this would be amazing to start putting some of these coaching episodes out so you can actually hear and get some kind of coaching for yourself. Gina, thank you for being on the podcast and being open and vulnerable and okay with coaching (laughs) on the podcast. Thank you, Samantha, for having me. Yeah. I'm excited to be here. Okay, so real quick, Gina is kind of in a place where she has just got started. It was about two months ago that she had her light bulb moment of, I love this. This is what I want to do for a living. She has a two-year-old daughter, and so she's definitely very new, but she's also quite farther along than some people are at just the two months after the light bulb moment. She's already got the advertising on her vehicle. She's got her website up. She just, you know, needs to do a few more tweaks with that. She's already organized for two different clients, one for free, and then one actually paid her, even though it was supposed to be free, which was a nice little added bonus. And yeah, so I mean, in two months, like you've been kicking butt. Thank you. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So we were also talking, Gina is... Right now, just in that place that a lot of you are where she's trying to get this going, she's trying to get clients, she wants to make sure that this is something that she loves. She's like 99% sure that she does, but now it's a matter of what type of clients do you love and do you enjoy helping them declutter more or organize more or do you like older people? Just those types of questions. And so remind me, Gina, where is it you're located? I'm located in Hope Sound, Florida. In Florida. Okay. And so is it like a big city? Is it a small town? The town that I'm in, which is Hope Sound, is a small town. Okay. We have like the bigger cities that are around, like which is uh, Stewart and Jupiter. Okay. And how far are those towns from you? Those aren't too far. Jupiter is about 20 minutes. And I would say like Stewart is about like 15, 20 minutes. Oh, perfect. So you're kind of right in between two different towns that you could actually market to that are bigger and that would more than likely have more opportunity for the decluttering and the organizing sessions. Yes. Um, so what would you like to walk away with today at the end of our session? Like what would make you feel good? Like what point would you like to get to, I guess? I would just like to take away some ideas on how I can take massive action and start marketing and getting people calling me interested in their, you know, organizing and just in decluttering. Okay. Yeah. Now, how do you, so I know we all get to that place, right? Where we're like, okay, we need to let everybody know. And her and I had talked about during one of our group calls, which by the way, if you missed, then you missed out (laughs) in one of the group coaching calls that we did we were talking about how um, it's good if you can set a number for yourself, whether it's one, two, three, whatever you're comfortable with, of a certain amount of people that you tell per day who you are and what you can do for them. And even if it's like a one minute conversation, 
You don't want to go up and like start yelling at them and being like, oh my gosh, I can declutter your home. But if you're at the nail salon and the person beside you, you know, and you get to kind of talking, you can be like, oh, hey, just so you know, I can help people declutter their homes. I love organizing. I'd love to give you a business card. If you or anyone you know would be interested, always make sure to add that or anyone you know, because a lot of times people may not feel like they are ready, but they'll have one or two people come to mind like, oh, well, I can pass your information along to so-and-so. And so that's a good way to definitely tangibly tr get your name out there and get right. people talking about what you can do. But what I also kind of wonder, so, you know, we definitely get the networking thing out there. What I'm wondering is, let's say someone called tomorrow, okay? Do you have yourself set up to where when they do call, you know what you're going to say, you have like your client intake form, you've got all of the pieces mm -hmm. on the back end to where you feel comfortable enough that, you know, because one side of this is marketing, but the yeah. other side is making sure we are prepared when they do call so we don't lose the client. Yeah, exactly. And that's something that I'm working on right now. Because I do have a client intake form, but no, I'm trying to figure out how that goes. Because of course, you know, this day and age, we have our cell phone and our phone goes everywhere with us. So when somebody does call and say you answer and, hey, this is Gina, I get organized by Gina, what, whatever your business name is, mm -hmm. you know, say you're on the road or say you're, you know, walking your dog or say you're walking your baby on, in the stroller. I mean, you're not really prepared at that point. So that's where I was trying to like navigate. How can I do this? Because I don't want to be put on the spot and not prepared and not have it in an organized way where I can basically lead the customer to where I want them to go. Yeah. One thought is that you can always make some sort of either note or something that you can quickly get to in your phone that has the questions that you want to answer or that you want to ask. Okay. Uh, another option is that you can always let them know. So what I did when I first, you know, got started is I made sure that my voicemail sounded very professional, mm -hmm. right? And the way I made it sound professional was like, I am either on the other line with the client or I'm currently in a session just to make it sound like I'm so busy. <laughs> right. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. And if you will leave me a detailed message, I will get back to you as soon as possible to where they can give you their information. Yeah. And so if you're in a really loud, crowded store where you know you don't have five minutes to at least talk for a second, then go ahead and send it to voicemail. And then as soon as you get out to the car where you're in a quiet spot, you can immediately listen to the voicemail and call them straight back. And because most people aren't really expecting a phone call. I called a lady back. She sent me a website form last night at 6 p.m. Right. And it immediately popped up on my phone. Someone's filled out the form on your website. And so I immediately called her right back and she was like, wait, she goes, did you really just call me back at 6 p.m. in the evening? And I was like, well, yeah, I mean, why wouldn't I, you know, like, cause I'm of the mind frame that like, if I'm not busy, I'm going to call mm -hmm. back. But then I've also had other times where kind of like you're saying, you're either busy or it's the middle of dinner or whatever those things are that right. I'm not going to answer. And so I do let it go to voicemail. There have been times that I've listened to the voicemail and once I realized, oh, it's not a spam call, it's an actual person yeah. needing an organizing session, I go ahead and send them a quick text. And the way I do the text is, hi, this is Samantha with Love, Laugh, Organize. I can't wait to talk to you about your organizational goals. I would love to know what time would be best for us to have about a 15 minute chat. And then okay. that way it sounds professional, almost like you're taking care of them and waiting to call, even though it's okay. really because you're super busy <laughs> right. and you can always leave it open or you could always say what time tomorrow would be good for you. Or if you have a couple of times that, you know, the baby's going to be down for a nap or the hubby can watch the baby for just a minute, maybe mm. give them two or three options. Like okay. would 4 p.m., 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. this evening be better for me to reach back out to you? And then that way it still sounds professional, but it keeps you from having to feel like you have to answer the phone every single time your right. phone rings because yeah. 
The majority of the time you're going to answer, you're going to say, this is organized by Gina and you're going to be so excited. And then it's going to be someone from another country and it's a spam <laughs> call. I know. <laughs> yeah. So what would you say, like the hours that you like pass that you wouldn't call somebody back eight o'clock at night or? Well, so there's a little bit of a difference when you're first getting started compared to once you get established. I've heard of a lot of organizers that once they're established, they're like, listen, I've set my hours. I only do hours from this time to this time. Mm -hmm. But when you're first getting started, you're like, listen, I just need some clients. Right. And so I think the latest I've sent someone a message back has been around like 8 p.m. And then I've asked them, are you available right now to chat? Or would you rather me give you a call back tomorrow? Okay. But you never want to ask them what time they're going to call you. You want to ask what time is best for you to call them. Because right. if it's set up for them to call you, yeah. they're not calling back. <laughs> yeah. I see. Yeah. But as long as you even open up that line of communication, and that's the point, is right. e even if you can hear your voicemail while walking your daughter or whatever, just sending that quick text and opening that line of communication at least lets them know, oh, she is going to get back to me. She did hear my voicemail. She's just busy at the moment. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so, yeah. So, I mean, it's never been an issue for me as long as I made sure to go ahead and do a quick text or that kind of thing. And yeah. then, so on your client intake form, and I know you wanted to go okay. networking, <laughs> but I just want to make sure that for you, we're actually going in the steps that are going to be most beneficial to you. Because if you've already had two people that you've organized for, right, then mm -hmm. it's already getting out there that you can organize for people. You seem like such a people person where you're going to start telling people it's already on the side of your car. You've already got your Facebook group going. It's going to get out there. It just does take time. It's planting yeah. seeds. You got to keep throwing yes. those seeds. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know that that necessarily is best in this moment. I think what is best in this moment is really making sure that when those calls do come in, because they will making mm -hmm. sure that you feel prepared. I see. Yes. <clears throat> and I mean, I can give you an idea of what's on the client intake form. If you like, I was able to create a couple of forms on, on jot form where if I'm actually at the client's house, like I was able to do a service agreement, they can literally take their finger and sign on my phone. So the client intake form, which I actually got from the Clutterbug, Cassandra, she shared those forms when you take the course. So I basically just used what she had. And I realized like some of these things I wouldn't ask the client, but I'm not sure maybe you feel otherwise, but I have like their full name, their first and last name, address, phone number, email. And then some of the questions that I have on here is what's motivating you to call me about getting organized? Have you tried to get organized on your own or with another professional organizer? What has kept you from accomplishing your organizing goals? The size, type of home or office, any special needs, days and times available to work with an organizer, any time frame, a budget in mind, days and times available to work with an organizer. What do you do for a living? I don't know. That one's kind of funny. And how did you find out about me? I did see another one where they were asking, and I'm probably going to change this up a little bit now that I'm thinking about it, but if it's a smoking or non-smoking home, because I personally wouldn't feel comfortable going in a home where it's, you know, filled with smoke and such. Yeah. So what if on that note, just a quick little side note, just because I'm curious, if someone did say, yes, I do smoke in my home or I'm a smoker, but I don't smoke in my home, what would you then say to them? Okay. So if they said that they were a smoker, but didn't smoke in their home, then I probably wouldn't really just say anything. I would probably just acknowledge their answer. Yeah, I see. Okay. And then maybe go on to a next question or whatever the case is, but I know that's actually a good question. Like, what would I say um, if they said that they smoked in their home? I mean, I could say something like I'm allergic, you know, unfortunately I'm allergic to smoke or allergens or whatever the case is. Yeah. So a, a good kind of rule of thumb, when you hit a point of either the person, you're just getting a bad kind of on the inside 
you realize that the job just doesn't suit you for whatever reason, the yes. smoking, the anything, whatever it is, the distance you have to travel. I mean, there's mm -hmm. so many reasons that a job could not be the best fit. Right. And so there's a couple options. One is saying, I appreciate you reaching out, but unfortunately we are not accepting new clients at this moment but I would love to send you a list of other organizers in the area. And you do need to have a few organizers in your area. If you can do some research, hopefully there are some specifically yeah. a hoarder specialist. Like you need to have their name and number where you can access it in your phone to give to someone. Okay. And then just one or two other organizers that you would be able to kind of pass it along to, or you can always be honest and say something about the allergens. You just want to make sure that whatever you say. Calling all passionate professional organizers. Whether you are just getting started or you've been at this a while, exciting news awaits. Our revamped professional organizers coaching community is set to launch in September and I am inviting you to be a part of this transformative journey. But hurry, enrollment is only going to be open from September 1st to September 10th. We're taking our commitment to your success up a notch. For just $47 a month, brace yourself for an enhanced experience that's designed exclusively for you. Every Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. Eastern, we will meet. Throughout the month, you'll immerse yourself in two impactful group coaching sessions, one dynamic workshop, and a focused co-working session. As if that's not rewarding enough, the first Sunday of each month at 6 p.m. Eastern brings a bonus enriching group coaching session. And girl, we know that life gets busy, so we've got you covered. Our replay vault ensures you won't miss a moment. Can't attend a live session? Catch up on the replays at your convenience. Plus, remember, your membership fee qualifies as a legitimate business expense, making this a smart tax write-off. Our sisterhood offers unwavering support, accountability, and boundless inspiration. Your journey is our journey, and together we will thrive. You can find the links in the show notes below or you can go to proorganizerscoach.com slash join to fill out your application and we will see you in September. I think if, you know, and whatever feels best for you and you'll kind of tweak this as you go along for what, what suits you and what information you feel like you need. But for me personally, I always just ask their name. I always ask them, so what had you reach out to a professional organizer, or I would love to hear more about why you feel like you need an organizer at this time in your life, or just whatever that question is that like, just gets them talking, right? Okay. Or like, so tell me a little more about the stressors or the pain points that are happening for you right now. Any of those types of questions, you just want to get them talking, right? Okay. You want to introduce yourself, say, hi, this is Gina. I'm so grateful that you called me. And then you want to jump straight into like asking them. So tell me about right. why you're calling me. Tell me the information because the more you can get them to talk as crazy as it is, the more they're going to trust you by the end of the phone call okay. because they're going to jump off the call and be like, wow, I feel so much better. I just got to get all of that off of my chest. Yeah. And plus the more you let them talk and the more questions you ask, the more information you're naturally going to get anyways. Yeah. Instead of asking it as a formal, this question, this question, this question, just let the conversation kind of flow naturally and it, you'll get those answers is the point. And then as you're talking, if you feel like there's anything that you need follow-up wise, you always have the consultation to ask those questions right? What is your plan for a consultation? Have you gotten that far yet on your yeah, thoughts? My plan for a consultation is to do, I, I mean, I was like kind of debating on whether I should do, I mean, I kind of like what you say about, you know, being in their home in the consultation rather than say a virtual consultation where they're showing me around virtually that can get a little confusing, especially at first, maybe. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so my plan is to do the in-home consultation as a complimentary 
service. Well, okay. the initial consultation for around 45 minutes, like you. Typically. Yeah. Like the free in-home yeah. consultation. Yeah. Because you want to make sure not only do they need to make sure that you're the right fit for them, yes. but you need to make sure that they're the right fit for right. you. Like exactly. if you walk into a home and just a little side note for anyone listening, that's just getting started. I don't care what home I'm walking into, my keys and my cell phone stay in my hand during that whole consultation, only because you're a female walking into someone else's home. And if at any point you need to pretend that you just got a text and that there's a family emergency, then by all means, oh my gosh, my husband just said there's an emergency. I'm so sorry. I've got to go. I will reach back out to you within a few days. I apologize and then run out the door if you have to. Right. It's never happened. I'm not saying it is going no, to happen. To be prepared if it ever were to happen, because it could. Right. You just don't want to walk in. I just wanted to put that out there for a lot of people getting started. You wouldn't want to walk in and like set your purse or your keys or all your stuff down at the kitchen table as you start to walk through the home. And then all of a sudden you're in the back bedroom and you don't have your phone, your keys, your nothing yeah. in your hand. Yeah, that's a good point. And yeah. I did hear from somebody, another professional organizer somewhere, and I thought it was a great idea. And I actually did end up ordering them, but I ordered a pair of scrubs to be for like a uniform. And I thought it was such a great idea because of like all the pockets that they have in the front. Mm-hmm. So I can put like, say a little tape measure. I could put my phone, I could put whatever I need right in there and I could pretty much be hands-free. So yes. And yeah. then I've even got like, I went to Vera Bradley and got a cute little hit bag. That's not technically a fanny pack, but yeah. you know, kind of like a fanny pack where it's just that cute little like square hit bag Yeah, or even just something to where it's on you is the point. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Either one of those are great options. And so back to the consultation, you're wanting to do the free one. So the the goal of your phone call is to set up the consultation because like we've talked about before, once you get in front of them and when you first walk into their home, you're going to, you know, introduce yourself and then you're going to be like, okay, so let's do a quick tour. Show me the areas that you are having issues with. They will immediately take over. They will start walking. They'll start opening doors for you and showing you areas. Now, I will say that like if they go to show you, let's say an office and they open the door and they kind of stand in the doorway, then go ahead and ask, do you mind if I walk in and look around and look in some drawers? Is that okay? So I can get a better idea of what Mm. we're dealing with. Right. And then while you're standing in that area, you want to make sure to say, Okay, so tell me a little bit about maybe what some of these piles are just to get a brief, you know, you can even say, give me a brief description of what some of these piles Mm -hmm. are. Because, and and I know we've said this, but you've got to say it multiple times. So, you know, just in case someone didn't hear the last one and they only heard this one, you've got to know what you're getting into on the day of the session so you can come prepared. And not prepared just with physically what you need, but prepared mentally. And if you walked into a home and you're like, wow, this home is gorgeous and you didn't open any doors and then you walk in thinking this is going to be a breeze, which I've done. And then I start opening doors and all of a sudden the never ending pile of just stuff after stuff after stuff that changes the whole mood where mentally I would have liked to have been in a different headspace walking in. Right. And then also I'm thinking as far as that, if they had asked like, how long is this going to take? You're going to probably need to take a little bit longer if there's a lot of things in their drawers and hidden. So you might not be managing their expectations then. Yes. And two things on that one, it's always better to under promise and over deliver. (laughs) You always want to do better than what you say. So, Mm -hmm. you know, better that you say it may take up to eight hours and it only takes you six compared to you said three. And all of a sudden it actually takes you six. And they're like, well, you said three hours. You want to keep them happy. But the other thing with that is that you want to make sure that you explain to your clients because everything is client expectation, but make sure that you explain to them So when they ask the question of how long is this going to take, because they're all going to ask that question, right? Because it's a natural question of like, how much Mm -hmm. is this going to cost me? How long is this going to take? I always put it back on them. 
Okay. It, it depends on how quick you are at making decisions as to how fast we can get through this. Mm -hmm. And then you've got to come up with kind of, and you'll figure it out within just a few sessions, but I typically can do a room in about four to six hours, unless it's like the kitchen or a garage. Mm -hmm. um, but it may only take three hours or it may take closer to six based on how quick you are able to make decisions. And once we get in there, how much stuff we actually end up having to pull out okay. because we have to pull it all out to sort it, declutter it, to put it back to where it can be organized for you. And I also try to remind them, I don't want to, you know, barely do this to where when I leave, it goes right back to the way it was. I want to do yeah. this correctly for you. And so, yes, it may seem like it might take a little longer, but like I said, it's completely up to you on how quick you are at making decisions but I'm okay if you need to talk about something. If we come across something sentimental and you need to take a moment to, to talk it out, I am here for that too. There is no rush. And if it's because of finances, like if you need to have two weeks in between one session to the next, or even one a month until we get the home gone through, right. I'm open to whatever works best for you, for your finances and for your emotional well-being, because I know this is an emotional process. Okay. Yeah. That. And so, you know, it's all about making sure they feel comfortable and that they know, oh, she really is thinking about me. Like, yes, this is costing money, but she's not making me feel like this all has to be done in the next two weeks and we have to get my entire home gone through. She's telling me we can go at my pace because there's almost this stigma of, professional organizing is for like the rich and famous kind of mm -hmm. thing. And it's really not the majority of the people that really need the help are even middle class to even I've had multiple clients that are on a fixed income yeah. because they're yeah. older. Mm -hmm. And so just making sure that they understand, listen, I understand if you need to save up in between our sessions for our next session, that's completely fine with me. I just want to make sure that I'm not bringing you more stress I want yeah. to take away your stress. Okay, that's nice. Yeah. That's a nice quote. Yeah. <laughs> so during the, the phone call to get to the consultation, do you go over your pricing? How does that usually work? Because a lot of them do ask how much it costs, of course. Yes. So my typical phone call literally is someone calling me or they filled out the form on my website is actually more commonly what happens. Okay or they reach out through messenger. But for the most part, they fill out my form on my website. And so then I send them a message or an email and I'm like, Hey, this is Samantha. Um, you know, what's a good time for us to speak about your organizational goals? What time are you available? Yada, yada, like we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. And then we get on the phone and I'm like, Hey, it's so nice to meet you. So tell me a little bit about your organizing goals. And then everything we talked about before, and then they literally will get to a point where they've told you about these three or four rooms that are driving them nuts, why they are driving them nuts. They'll go into all the details. And then they will come to some point where they'll say, so what does it cost or what is it like to work with you? How does this work is normally yeah. kind of the question that you get. And so my kind of spill when someone says that is... And I always tell them, I do it a little different than other organizers. A lot of organizers will come in, they will look at your home, they'll decide, okay, this may take, let's say 10 hours. So 10 hours is $1,000. And so you either owe half up front or you owe all of it up front before they even get to work. Um, there's also organizers in the area that have a team that could come in and do your whole home in like one day or two. Ooh just because I want them to know the options. And yeah. then I tell them, but for me, the way that I run my business is I don't believe in getting paid for work I have not done yet. <clears throat> so I do a three hour session. The three hour session is 297. And what that includes is for three hours, you and I together will declutter whatever area that is and even if that means that you sit in a chair and I become your hands and feet, or you're just around the home so I can at least ask questions about things because I would never want to get rid of something that you would like to keep. Okay. 
And I always tell them as time goes on after one or two sessions, I could probably do it more on my own because I'll know you more by then. Mm -hmm. But definitely that first one or two sessions, it's a collaborative process mm -hmm. because I want to make sure that this is getting done and to the best of my ability for you. Okay. But it's a three hour session. It's 297. What that includes is I come in, we actually do the decluttering and the organizing for the three hours. And then at the end of the three hours, anything that we have decided that day is, is something you want to release, whether it's donations or trash, I haul off for you. So you are left with only the items you want to keep put back in an orderly fashion. Okay. And then that's it. That's like my little spill. And so then I always end it with, but the first step is the free consultation. Yeah. And so I would love to set that up with you if you are interested. And okay. that's also another reason that I put my prices on my website. And I've gone back and just recently realized I might tweak those a little bit only because I want to make sure that the way I would describe it on a phone call is the way mm. it's written on my website. I see. Because I don't want to confuse anybody. And so I think I'm going to go back and kind of tweak that. I've just had so many different things going on. Yeah, <laughs> I, I haven't had a chance, <laughs> but that's life. Right. And so I just yeah. keep going. But point being is everyone gets excited. A, when they realize that I'm not just going to come in and like start throwing all of their stuff away. Yeah. And B, they get excited when they realize that I'm going to haul everything off that they no longer want. Yeah. And so as long as I tell those two things, I always make sure to bring it back to, but the first step after this is the free consultation. And then that is when I would ask, so do you work days or weekends or what is your schedule so we can figure out the best time and day to set up that consultation? That's when you need to know kind of what they do for work. It's not what do they do for work. It's more of what is your schedule like? So then if they say, oh, well, I normally work Monday through Friday during the day, then I'd be like, okay, well, let me look at my schedule and see what I have on a Saturday. And then it's just a conversation of me being right. like, do you have someone, you know, that can watch the kids on a Saturday or would yeah. an evening be better for you? Which is better for you? <clears throat> it's so easy. It's ridiculous. But as perfectionists and organizers, we make it into this whole big thing that it really is just a conversation and yeah. it's, it's building that relationship. It's just making sure that they feel seen and heard and that they get off the phone feeling like, okay, I feel better. She seemed very normal, mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of the way you would want to feel if you called someone that was then going to come in your home and see your most intimate belongings. I think we forget sometimes how we would feel if we were like, hey, come in and look in my underwear drawer. Right. I would want a normal sounding person that sounded really nice and like they were not going to judge me yeah. <laughs> if they were going to come in and start looking inside of all of my belongings. <laughs> Yeah. So how are you feeling about the phone call? If someone were to call you tomorrow, like if they see, you know, all the places that you've already been advertising, if they see, oh, I need to call her and they call you. How are you feeling about that? I definitely feel more confident in the way that I can go about that now, the way that I can structure it. So this way I can get to the end goal that I just discussed, like in, in the beginning that I do want to get more consultations in-home consultations with people from off the phone because there has been a couple of people that called me and then it just kind of led nowhere because I wasn't really prepared but that's part of the process I'm not like down on myself about it it's just yeah I definitely feel more prepared and confident good do that. you feel or do you mind sharing about one of those times just so I can kind of give you any pointers or do you feel like you know where it went wrong when they called yeah, I would say that I know where it went wrong when they called. Okay. Um, I mean, I can share one of the most recent stories if the listeners would find it helpful. I mean, I'm sure they would because at this yeah. point, everyone wants to hear anything they can to gain <laughs> wisdom. We all need more yeah, wisdom in our life. Wisdom, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. So I just was driving back home. Me and my daughter were going to Sam's Club and we were driving back home and I got a call 
and I wasn't prepared. And I think I just said, hi, this is Gina, which is fine. Yeah. Um, And then she said that she's seen me organizing and decluttering on my vehicle. So I I said, okay, you know, so where are you located? Just to kind of make sure she was in the area. Of course. And she told me she was located in an area that I would have no problem working with. I said, okay, good. And then I just asked her what are some of the things that she needed help with. And she was explaining her closets and such. And then I'm trying to think how it was. So we were talking and she told me about the closet. I said, okay, you know, I could definitely help you with that. And she asked me how it works. And then I think I told her that, you know, it really just depends. Like I could either go to her home and do a consultation, or if I find out that she needs like specific organizing help, I can just go and start. <laughs> You're right. I go to my house. <laughs> and I think I maybe caught her off guard. And so I said, well, do you have a little bit of time so I can like talk to you a little bit more in detail about what you need help with, where I went wrong, obviously, side note. And then she's like, well, I'm at work right now. I can't really talk. I later found out she works at a nail salon. So, I mean, she could have been honest about that, but which was in the area. So I see where she had seen my vehicle. So she just said that she couldn't talk right now. So I said, okay, not a problem. Just call me back whenever. Yeah. <laughs> not whenever, but whenever it you was, have time, give me a call. Yeah. Cause when they call us, they expect us to know the answers yeah. <clears throat> and to know like the way that we do it. So when they're calling to ask a question, like, what is your process? I've literally had people that, Hey, I saw your, your advertisement on your car. What is your process and your pricing? They don't want to talk about anything. They just want my exact process and my exact pricing. Mm -hmm. And so I told him my process, my pricing, the whole nine. And then he was like, okay, thank you. I'll let you know if my wife is interested. And then he hung up on me. <laughs> so yeah, you're going to get those people, right? And that was really good practice for you. Right. Because uh, I realized, yeah. What yeah. I, I realized that I needed to get that organized. <laughs> you're right. Like your process needs to be organized. So they feel like, oh, this professional organizer is organized in her business. And so right. she must be able to help me. Right. Yeah. Which I think you've got now. Like, I think that the next time you get a phone call, you're just going to, again, either send it to voicemail. So that's step number one. Is your voicemail set up to where it sounds like it's okay. Yeah. And so you're either going to send it to voicemail. If you know, right in that moment, even if you feel like, Hey, I just need two minutes to breathe before Mm -hmm. I make this phone call back, whatever it is, You want to come with the most calming presence because they are in a place where they're stressed. Mm -hmm. It's chaotic for them. They're overwhelmed. That's why they're reaching out in the first place. And so if it takes you a minute to breathe and get yourself kind of centered before you make that phone call, Mm -hmm. it's worth it. I promise. And then even if it's the texting them back of saying, I apologize right now, I'm currently in a session or I'm currently at my whatever but I would love to speak with you. What time is best for me to call you back? Would this evening or tomorrow morning work best for you? Just being very precise because the same way that if we were to call like an electric company, they would be very precise and kind of to the point when it came to the actual details of setting up the consultation. And they would never be like, well, Um, I don't know how it works and I'm not really (laughs) sure like your house is on fire, your fans smoking. I don't know. Hold on. Let me ask my boss and I'll get back to you. Or you know what I mean? Like exactly what you mean. (laughs) Yeah. They'd be like, listen, chick, turn off all your electric, go to the thing, turn everything off. (laughs) We need to set up. We'll be there. I had a guy tell me, which baffled my mind, but it is what it is. It's his business and he's been in business for 30 years. So obviously he's doing something right. But right out of the gate, he said, listen, it's a two hour minimum. It's 130 bucks an hour. He said, so is that something you're interested in or not? Oh, wow. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Like, yeah. He said, and it doesn't matter if we're there 10 minutes, you're paying the two hour minimum. (laughs) And I was like, okay. And I was a little caught off guard, but the fan in my son's room had caught fire the night before. So I was like, 
okay, yep, come on out. I'll pay the, you know, because it's electricity, of course, it's important. But I think we forget how organizing for some people is important too. A lot of them are so stressed and so overwhelmed Mm -hmm. that the same way that I felt when I was calling for help, when my son's Mm -hmm. fan motor had caught fire, is kind of the same way they feel when they're reaching out for help is they've tried everything. They've done it all. They've bought all the bins. They feel so helpless and worthless and why I should be able to do this for myself. Why can't I do this for myself? And then they call us. And so I think it's so important to remember that that's where 80% of the people that call us, they are in that moment whenever we answer the phone or whenever we give them a call back. And you've got a very good aura and presence about you and like very calming and soothing. You've got this, I promise. Because, you know, we get that imposter syndrome where we feel like we almost have to be someone that we really aren't. Right. And it's actually the exact opposite, where if we would stay true to who we are, we're going to get more clients than if Mm -hmm. we would try to be someone we're not. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I am so thankful that you came on today and that we were able to kind of chat and real quick, is there anything else like a last minute question or thought or comment, concern, anything going on for you or? No, not really. I really got a lot of value out of our talk today and I really appreciate you. Good. Yeah. And then, like I said, just remember like you were called to this and your light bulb moment obviously happened for a reason, Mm -hmm. right? And so remembering that in these moments when you start to doubt of, listen, I've been called to this. Like, I know I can do this. I know I'm good at this. I've just got to figure out these few little puzzle pieces at the beginning. But once I get this ball rolling, it's going to snowball Mm -hmm. and just keep it going. You've got this, I promise. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. I really appreciate it. Same to you. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Pro Organizers Coach Podcast. If you've gotten any value from today's episode, be sure to subscribe to our podcast and leave us a five-star review on your favorite podcast platform. It really helps us grow and it warms my heart to hear from you. And make sure to stay connected with us on socials at Pro Organizers Coach. Then go to ProOrganizersCoach.com to find all the ways that we can help you succeed in your business. You have the power to make a difference in people's lives through decluttering and organization. Keep honing your skills, embracing those challenges and fostering connections within our organizing community. Progress will come with every step. So keep pushing forward and you will achieve your dreams. Girl, you've got this.